I really didn't know what the menu was about before I saw it, and frankly the advertising didn't help. From the trailer, my best guess was that the movie was like most dangerous game but with a food theme. But really, it's more like a two hour episode of Hell's Kitchen if Gordon Ramsay was a serial killer. So, not that different from a normal episode of Hell's Kitchen, I guess. The premise is Ray Fiennes plays some world-famous chef who has some super exclusive restaurant on an island, and we follow a group of people who boat out to this place to experience his incredible cuisine for 12,000 bucks a pop, but they soon find out that Fiennes and his kitchen staff had a very sinister ulterior motive for bringing them all to this island. Craziness ensues. This is a weird movie, and even after seeing it and thinking about it for two days before I sat down to write this video, I'm still not sure what to make of it. But I've heard some critics say that it's a movie about obsession, which I think is not totally accurate. It's a movie about one person's obsession, that being Ray Fine's character, and there are some other people who are definitely obsessed, but the why and how of it is never really explained. And then you've got additional people who are not really obsessed about anything, but who are there because the plot says so, and that leaves us with a frustrating cast of characters, most most of whom you might want to get on board with, but you can't because in many cases their behavior just doesn't make sense. I think what bugs me the most about the menu is that I can kind of see the core idea that they wanted to base the movie on, but it's as if halfway through developing that idea, the writers just threw up their hands and went, alright, that's enough, and then filled in all the holes in the script with a bunch of disparate character beats and narrative dots that don't really connect to anything. With the exception of Ray Fox and Anya Taylor-Joy's characters, and to be honest, even ATJ is a bit of a stretch, every major character's motivation is maddeningly unclear. And for me, that pretty much kills the movie right there. Because when your story is supposedly about people who are obsessed, if you don't understand their obsessions, then the characters don't work. Fines is the only one we get any genuine insight into, and even with him, it's just barely enough to make the calculus work about why he's doing all this. Just about everyone else is a mystery. They might have some secrets to be revealed, like some of them have connections to the restaurant that ultimately don't matter that much beyond it just being the reason why they're there, but for a lot of them, this stuff isn't fleshed out nearly enough for us to understand why it's important, why we should care about it, or how it informs what these people are doing now. For example, Nicholas Holt's character is a foodie, and over the course of the movie, it's revealed that he's not just a foodie, he's an obsessive foodie, to the point that he takes being a foodie to some really bizarre extremes. Why is he like this? I don't know, and they don't tell us. It's important for some reason, the movie just doesn't seem to be interested in what that reason is. And the same thing applies to most of these people, but for my money, the ones hurt more than any of the others by the lack of character motivation are the kitchen staff. Because they're basically the same as Ray Fiennes, except he has a character, and they don't. They're batshit insane just like he is, but in their case, we have no damn clue why they're acting the way they are. We know they have a fanatical devotion to the chef, but we don't know why. We know they're so committed to him that they're willing to kill and die for him, but we don't know why. And when you don't tell us stuff like that, it's really hard to make sense of what's going on when the weird shit starts happening. And that's up to and including the most important and fundamental thing of all, wanting to live. From pretty early on, I was asking myself the same damn question over and over. Why the hell are the guests just sitting there? Because they find out pretty quickly that there's some bad shit going down in this place, and once they do, you'd think they'd be trying harder to escape. A couple of them do make a half-hearted attempt that Ray finds sort of allows for some reason that make no f***ing sense at all, but for the most part, they're just sitting at their tables letting this happen. I mean, Shit, at what point do your survival instincts kick in? I couldn't understand for the life of me why the guests didn't all just band together and rush these assholes. The worst thing that could happen is they die trying to escape, but they're all absolutely going to die if they don't escape, and they know this. What the hell, people? Just grab the knives you were using to cut your food and make a break for it. And sure, not all the guests are young and able-bodied, but there are enough of them to where if they work together to try to escape, at least some of 
them would probably have a decent chance, but instead they just f***ing sit there waiting to die basically, and it never makes sense why. And if it seems like they're trapped, it's only because any attempts they do make to get out are utterly half-assed or stupid. The only possible reason for this I could think of is that maybe the point was to deconstruct all these characters and gradually reveal something ugly about each of them, something they hate about themselves, which drives them to the brink of accepting what's about to happen because now they don't want to live anymore after the personal revelations they've just made, but that didn't seem to be it. Or if that was the point, then the movie failed hard, because even after all their secrets are exposed, the idea that any of them wouldn't choose to fight or do pretty much anything to try to survive, even when a way to escape is handed to them gift-wrapped, was still f***ing baffling to me. The movie doesn't even seem entirely sure what to do with several major story points or with Anya Taylor-Joy, who's the main protagonist. She got herself into the restaurant because of some vague connection to one of the other guests in a subplot that is a thing in one or two scenes for no discernible reason, doesn't factor into anything, goes nowhere, and then just disappears. Other characters do try to escape at one point when they're given a chance to do so. Beats the hell out of me why they're given a chance, but they are. But at a different point in the movie, when they have another chance, a better chance, suddenly they don't. It, it just makes no sense. Not many things about this movie do. The menu is messed up. Ray Fiennes gives a very creepy performance, and Anya Taylor-Joy is always good, but even she looks like she wasn't sure what to make of this thing, and I'm right there with her. I don't know what the hell happened here. I have no idea what this movie was trying to do or say, or why a lot of the characters behave the way they do, and if there were scenes that actually clarified any of that stuff, they're on the cutting room floor. I'm not sure what misfired here exactly, I just know that it did. So my advice? Go watch some Christmas movies instead of this. I imagine you'll have a better time with that, because I don't think there's anything on this menu that you need to order. Thanks so much for watching, and while you're here, please do all the other YouTube things. Ding the bell icon and follow my social media so you can always be notified when I upload new stuff. Links to that and to my live streaming channel are in the description box. And most importantly, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment, share, subscribe, and make sure you're still subscribed, because what really deserves to be lured to a secluded island and murdered by a psychotic evil hash slinger is the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now, but I'll be back with more soon. So stay tuned for that, take care, and I'll see you next time.